Hey guys, what's up? I'm Mark and in this channel, I talk a little bit about lifestyle but I mostly talk about business and investments. Starting October 2023, the Philippine Stock Exchange is launching a game-changing feature. If you've been invested in our local markets for a few years now, you know that this feature has been approved for a while now but it just hasn't been launched. Anyway, what is this new feature? The feature that I'm talking about is short selling in the Philippine Stock Exchange. Perhaps there are some of you who are already familiar with short selling and perhaps there are even some of you who have some experience in doing this with global trading platforms. But for everyone's benefit, let me define short selling. Actually, I'm gonna get Rappler's help. Short selling is a strategy where an investor first borrows shares of a stock from a broker and sells them in anticipation of a drop in price. The investor will then have to buy shares at a lower price and then return them to the broker profiting from the difference. So that might be a lot for an intro, but bear with me here. So simply put, short selling is a way for you guys to make money. But unlike what we're traditionally used to, we are hoping for our stocks, our UITFs, and mutual funds to be gaining, to be performing better. Short selling is on the other side of this. Short selling is you seeing that a stock will be underperforming, will be going down, and now you can take a position projecting that this certain stock will be going down. So yes, you will be betting that a stock will not be performing and will actually be on its way down. In many ways, you will be benefiting from the misery of others. So let's keep it simple. Short selling is a way for you to make money, again by taking an opposite position from perhaps what we are accustomed to. And while there are no exact guidelines yet from the Philippine Stock Exchange on what will be the fees, the procedures, and so on and so forth, what I wanted to cover is perhaps a brief introduction and perhaps some practical tips on what to expect when this feature becomes available from the Philippine Stock Exchange. So without further ado, let's go and explore how we can make money off this feature of short selling. Let's go! So before anything, you might be wondering what I know about short selling. I mean, I've always told you that I'm a long-term investor. I don't really get in and out of my positions with my stocks and shares just like that. And in fact, I've shared in many videos before that I really am more of a UITF and mutual fund investor. But despite the long-term investor mindset that I have, I've had a few experiences during the pandemic when I was really fiddling around with eToro. With eToro, you can actually short global stocks, commodities, and foreign currencies. So I did have some profitable trades. Of course, I had a lot of losses too as I experimented with this platform. Again, most of the time, I'm a long-term investor, but I do try and experiment here and there. So with that, I wanted to share with you here a few practical tips as you start exploring this feature. So number one, as the very name implies, short selling is really more of a short-term position that you should be taking. I've always talked about investing a little at a time because when we are investing in the hopes of appreciation, time will really be on our side because when we invest in a company that's publicly listed, for any entity, of course you are not there to lose. You are in it to win it. You are looking for sales growth and increased profitability. So even if you may be caught in a bad year, perhaps there are just some unforeseen circumstances that would affect the stock price. But the prospect of that company will always be on the projection of going up. That is the luxury of investing for the purpose of that stock price to be appreciated. With that traditional approach in mind, let's now talk about short selling. Again, with short selling, you are really projecting and putting your money into a company hoping and foreseeing that that company will be underperforming and the stock will be temporarily going down. So in retrospect, as you take a position and project that a company stock will be underperforming, you can only do so for a limited period. Because as mentioned earlier, if you were the top management and employees of that company, you're not actually in it to lose. You are there to be performing and it's only a matter of time for the stock of that company to be normalizing and appreciating again soon. So again, with short selling, this isn't something that you put in there and just hope it will perform in the long run. It's not like our traditional investments where, you know, we can just leave it there for weeks, months, 
even years. And I can leave them there without any problem, without really any big fees that I'm thinking about. Which leads us to the second tip about short selling. So with short selling, you as an investor actually borrow shares from a broker. You will technically not own them yet and you will only exit the position once you sell at a lower price. So if you heard that term, that's right, you are borrowing shares. And as with anything in the financial world, every time that you borrow, this will come at an interest. So short selling will undoubtedly have additional fees if you have a loan from a bank or anywhere else. The longer time that you don't return what you borrow will actually work against you. You really can't take a long-term position on this. Short selling will really be an in and out thing. Aside from the cost of borrowing, there are also processing fees and taxes. I honestly don't have the specifics on this right now. But just like our investment in the Philippine Stock Exchange, we usually go by the 8,000 peso rule. If you've been investing in the Philippine stock market, you know this, that to really make the most of your buying position, it would be at a minimum of 8,000 pesos for you to make the most of the processing fees that the brokerages would slap on. When you take your positions for short selling, you still have to figure out that sweet number, that 8,000 peso buy rule, which will apply to short sell. So my experience with the eToro platform is that I always defined my take profit and stop loss rate I mean, again, there are borrowing fees and time is not on your side. So having that stop loss is really a way for you to stop the bleeding because you might be taking a position against a company thinking that it will underperform, but it starts appreciating. And the more that it appreciates, the higher losses that you incur. So definitely this is a technique, a must that you must employ having a take profit or at the very least, a stop loss. When you take your positions for short selling, I hope the online trading platforms would have an automated way to do this already. So lastly, with those considerations in mind, you might be thinking, when can I really profit from a company that is going down? I mean, when does this happen? So for these instances where a company is expected to underperform and underdeliver, it's usually a factor of circumstances, of things that the company just can't control, and in turn, it affects their profitability and their sales. So let's explore a few historical scenarios. So let's say in 2020, just when the coronavirus was just starting to spread, Europe was a little ahead in their lockdown restrictions. So even before the US and the Philippines shut down, we already saw travel restrictions. So had short selling been around in our local markets then, what you could have done is to take a short selling position against Cebu Pacific. So if you could somehow foresee that travel restrictions would really be affecting the company, then that is an instance of you taking a short position against Cebu Pacific. So you might be thinking, well, that's just a very one-off scenario. I don't think we're going to have a pandemic again. Knock on wood. So yeah, I understand where you're coming from. But another instance perhaps where you can take a short selling position against Cebu Pacific and I don't have anything against Cebu Pacific, let me clear that up. So right now, there is an increase of gas prices because of the situation in Israel. But for this instance, again, you can take a short position also against Cebu Pacific because you know that the airline industry actually relies heavily on gas prices. The aviation industry is really reliant on gas prices. It's one of the few industries, the few businesses that really get a hit on their profitability when gas prices go up. Perhaps this is an opportunity, a short window of opportunity for you to short sell against an airline company. So other historical events that would have been an opportunity for short selling. Um, let's say when that fiasco with Metro Bank broke out, when it was found out that Metro Bank had that money laundering issue. So as the news broke out, again, if we had short selling then, that's another instance for you. Again, to put it simply, making some money off the misery of other people. So lastly, a third instance where perhaps you can make something of short selling. With many mining companies on the Philippine Stock Exchange, you always hear about loss with the DNR and there are always issues about mining stopping for a while. These instances would also affect the trade price of mining companies. Again, these are more of the bigger instances where you can profit from short selling and there are other factors maybe less obvious factors. When a company is expected to underperform, 
and it's up to you to take that position. Whether or not you will be correct, that's something that we'll just have to find out. So that's about it. Again, we don't have too many specifics yet about short selling. I'll do an update video on this in the future. For now, these are more theoretical but practical applications of how you can benefit from short selling. Let me know your questions in the comments down below. If you've liked this video, please don't forget to like, comment, and consider subscribing if you haven't already. Thanks again for watching, guys, and happy investing!